everyone to this Zoom call. We're certainly excited uh, to formally announce uh, our contract extension with the CEO of SAC Nation, Chris Jones. Uh, you know, over the last few years, Chris has really proven to be uh, an elite player at his position and really one of the best defensive players in the National Football League. With that being said, uh, Chris is uh, equally as talented off the field. Um, you know, our fans love him. Our community loves him. And again, just can't say how excited and thrilled we are to continue his career here. And uh, for how much he's accomplished already, we certainly feel he's just scratching the surface with his age and, and, and his talents. Uh, we're certainly expecting more great things to come. Uh, before I turn it over to Coach, I, I do want to thank once again my outstanding staff that works on the second floor, Brent Tillis, Chris Shea, for the hard work they've done. We certainly had a very busy offseason, but these guys – uh, have been relentless and, and we're certainly excited, um, you know, to get a lot of the things uh, that we wanted to when we set out in the offseason done. Uh, and then the Katz brothers, Michael and Jason Katz, you know, before this process started, I had a lot of respect for these guys, but as we've gone through this process, uh, that that respect has, has grown substantially just because uh, they've been patient with us throughout this whole process. Uh, they, they put their trust in us and, and we trusted them and, you know, we knew that uh, we just need a little time uh, to get this thing done because all parties were committed to keeping Chris in the Kansas City Chiefs uniform for a long time. So we're certainly appreciative for their help uh, and their understanding. Uh, with that being said, I'd like to turn it over to Coach Reed. All right. Thanks, Brent. Um, hey, congratulations to Chris Jones. Um, this is so well-deserved. Uh, he's done everything uh, that he's needed to do to become a top uh, defensive tackle in the National Football League. He probably could be the same thing at defensive in on the outside as he is on the inside. He just, uh, he's very talented. He brings a great personality to our football team. Uh, nothing's impossible uh, in his mind and, and that's the way he goes about it. So I've been proud of the, of the commitment that he's given to the, to the organization uh, and, and how, he's, how he's handled himself again uh, in the weight room, in the classroom, um, on the field. And then uh, in the community, he's been tremendous. My hat also goes off to to Brett and and his crew with with Brandt and Chris that they've done another phenomenal job along with the Katz brothers. I always joke the Katz brothers that really the only reason we signed Chris back was because their mom makes the best brownies you've ever had. So um, I'm still expecting to get those Chris and and the Katz brothers. So uh, so that that um, they've uh, they've really just done a, a great job. Of, of working and uh, working it out together. And again, Brett and his crew, what a phenomenal job they've done this off season. None of it's possible without Clark Hunt and the commitment that he's made to uh, the, the Kansas City area, to us as, as members of the organization. And, um, and, and Mark Donovan's also a part of this, being the president of the, of the organization. So um, all in all, just it, it's great for I think it's just great for this football team. Uh, we've got a lot of work ahead of us, uh, but this this is sure a great start. And uh, and uh, again, we appreciate Chris and and Chris heads up. He's his own man, so he heads he's headed this thing up. We losing there? Yeah, I think we lost the coach there. Oh, I just said uh, when we're done here, I don't know where you lost me, but uh, um, I was lost in cyberspace for a minute. It's quite exciting. Um, I, I'll turn it over to Chris from here. Uh, um, Coach Reed, uh, Brent Beach, uh, thank you guys for the kind words. I um, want to give a thank you to the Hunt, Hunt family and the Chiefs organization. Also, Mark Donovan, the president of the Chiefs, uh, and, uh, and the third floor, the second floor group, you know, Brett Beach, my dog, uh, Brett Tillis, um, the way he's um, structured everything, he was able to make sure that not only he signed me, but signed Pat and uh, get this thing done. And I'm just so excited to uh, spend the long haul on uh, the back ends of my career with the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, the organization grabbed for me, they took a chance. Thanks to Ryan Nudd. I can never forget Ryan Nudd for the chance. and. Uh, that he took on me, a kid out of Mississippi State with uh, ambitions and goals. And uh, I'm absolutely ready to work, man. Um, I always envision uh, my career as uh, being a chief and 
thankfully I'm there for the long haul. Okay, let's start with questions and we'll start with BJ Kissel. Go ahead, BJ. Thanks, Brad. And Chris, c congratulations. I've got a question for you a little bit later, but uh, this question is for Coach and Brett. Um, first, Brett, just with the challenges that this offseason presented with COVID and everything else, are you surprised that you and your staff were able to retain all of the players that you have? And then, Coach, the question for you will just be, you've often used the phrase energy givers. And I know that Chris fits right into that, but just how does this signing kind of lock that in and that, that personality that you talked about with the defense for the next few years? Brett, you can go ahead. Yeah, well, B, yeah, BJ, we certainly had some some obstacles to overcome. Uh, I wouldn't say we were surprised because we were driven and determined, uh, you know, this whole time at the combine. You know, I said that, you know, we were going to be um, uh, at, at work and, and really lay our plan out. And our plan was to do a lot of the things that we've done this offseason. But right at the top of that list was, was Pat Mahomes and, and Chris Jones, and everyone knew that. So when you have two elite players – um, you, you don't find these guys. These guys, you, you just don't draft them year after year. These guys come once every couple of years. Um, Chris is not a guy that you can just find in any draft. So when you have a player that talented, that special, um, you know, you're driven and determined. And, and, and look, I, I think that it took longer than we anticipated just because uh, of the unknown. Um, so I would say, you know, we weren't surprised uh, because we were driven and determined to make sure that Chris Jones was the Kansas City Chief. Yeah, so my part is uh, just what you said, BJ, is that Chris is an energy giver. He comes to work with a smile on his face uh, and, and works hard. And, and uh, uh, people can get, uh, they, they can uh, misunderstand his, his uh, vivacious personality uh, uh, but, and, and, and substitute that in that he might not be the, as smart because he's having a good time, but he's a brilliant kid. He, uh, like I said, he's been right in touch with this whole thing here. He goes about football that same way. When it's time to crank it down, he knows everything by every position that's going on and wants to know. And so, um, and, and that, those are the kind of guys that we like having on the football team. It's, uh, you know, we throw a lot at them and uh, at all positions and you want guys that can digest it. And, and Chris is able to do that still keep a smile on his face, still bring energy every day. And, and that helps guys feed on, especially during the tough times. All right, let's go to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, uh, Brett, um, understanding that there's so much uncertainty where the cap is going uh, starting next year, what's your comfort level that you'll have the wiggle room to do whatever it is you feel you need to do going forward once um, these contracts start kicking in? Yeah, well, we'll we certainly, we don't know yet. And, you know, I go back to, to BJ's question about being surprised. And, and, you know, my statement was we weren't surprised. It just took longer. And, you know, Adam, to your question, you know, that's really why this took some time because we were just trying to go through all the scenarios. Again, we don't know where the cap's going to be, but we have to have uh, plans ready in place for whether it grows, stays the same, it, it dips, you know, what levels, what, what we need to do. Um, you know, what moves do we have to make? So, um, you know, we have a plan and we'll be able to, to go in, in some different areas. But once we got to a level where we felt comfortable that over the next few years that, you know, we have enough um, uh, game planning in place uh, to protect ourselves, then, then we, we felt good. So, again, the whole time we felt confident that something would get done. We just needed to go through uh, some, you know, we waited for as much information as, as we could get. And, and then at, at a certain point, uh, once we felt pretty good about uh, our setup for the short and the long term, then we're able to pull the trigger. Let's go to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, guys. Um, thanks for doing this. Uh, Tysher actually just asked what I wanted to ask to, to, to Brett. But, um, Chris, I wondered if you could sort of touch on your journey as a whole. I mean, when you look back at coming from Houston, Mississippi, I mean, does, does signing a deal like this sort of allow you to think back at how far you've come? And, and if so, what stands out most about your journey here? Um, the hard work I actually put in uh, to get here and where I'm at today. And then uh, actually thinking about sleeping on a, a two-seater couch. You know, I called, that's the first thing I actually did uh, when I signed the deal. I called my grandmother and uh, we actually talked about me sleeping on our living room couch. You know, it was two feet. It came from my living room. It was so old, so we put it in a dining room and got a new living room. And that was my bed for my 
end of my junior year and my senior year of high school, I slept on that couch and we just talked and cried about it. So you actually go back and look at look at those times and reminisce and makes you really grateful for this. Let's go to James Palmer. Go ahead, James. All right, thanks, Brett. Um, this is for, for Chris and Brett. Uh, Chris, you kind of were outspoken about not wanting to play on the tag. If, if this deal didn't get done, were you genuinely not going to play this year? And then, Brett, with him kind of being outspoken in that sense, how did that play a part in your guys' negotiations and, and kind of how this went down? Um, me personally, um, I kind of had a feeling the deal was going to get done. Ashley was a crazy story. Ashley, Pat, when Pat deal got done, as soon as this deal got done, Pat texted me um, and said, let's get this thing done. I left some on the table. Let's get this thing done. And that's when I had the security that, you know, uh, that me and the Chiefs was going to work something out. I was confident in that and, uh, to make sure that they were going to get something done. Yeah, and as we were working through this process, uh, you know, again, the, the Katz brothers did, did an amazing job of, of just showing their patience and, and being understanding of, of the current climate and what was going on. Uh, we met at the Combine and, and, you know, we told them that, listen, this is a priority. Uh, Chris Jones will be a chief, but, you know, help us navigate this free agency process and, and then we'll be in good shape to understand where we are. And then as soon as we kind of got through that process, uh, you know, this uh, corona hit and everything got kind of turned upside down. So it would have been very easy for Chris to get upset, uh, for the Cass brothers to get upset, but they understood, uh, you know, they, um, they understood the climate and they understood that uh, things were going to get done. They were just going to take longer than anticipated. But again, I, I go back to just being able to um, express uh, our commitment to Chris and, and just getting through uh, the free agency period and then the, the you know the <laughs> pandemic, and then also understanding that we're we're also navigating a Pat Mahomes contract. Um, but they trusted us, and, and they believe that you know once we had all the information we needed, and once we got some things in order, uh, that you know we were certainly going to address uh, Chris Jones. You know, one of the things that got kind of taken, um, you know, turned got taken the wrong way was you know our commitment and and appreciation for Chris Jones, and you know, well it, how the Chiefs feel and this and that. I mean, the whole time. Uh, Chris and his agents knew that um, how much we loved him and, you know, we were absolutely going to do everything we could to keep him here. So, you know, I think that kind of got just because there wasn't a lot of talking. And the reason why there wasn't talking is because everyone, both sides, everyone needed more information. So um, the reality of it is we, we certainly love Chris and wanted him here and, and the agents believed in us. And, and we certainly were able to get this done through hard work and, and just a lot of trust and, and dialogue. Let's go to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. <clears throat> Hey guys, thanks for doing this. Uh, my question is for, for Brett. Um, Brett, you mentioned that Chris is a player that you just simply uh, can't draft. I know that you typically will zone in on these guys that you evaluate as blue players. What makes Chris that way for you? Well, I mean, he's, he's unblockable. I mean, you know, as an interior pass rusher, I mean, with his size, his athleticism, um, you know, his quickness, I mean, it, it takes two guys to block him. I mean, all you have to do is turn the Super Bowl on and see what he did in the Super Bowl against a very good uh, 49er team. Um, you know, when this guy goes, uh, you know, you can't block him. You, gotta, you have to put two bodies on him. Uh, but, again, he's a young guy, and, and we certainly feel that he's just scratching the surface. He's going to continue to get better and better and better. And Chris, Chris had stated, um, you know, when we uh, announced via Twitter that, that we signed him, that his goals were to be Defensive Player of the Year. And, and believe me, talent-wise um, – you know, there's no stopping him. So if he can stay healthy and just keep on this up, upward trajectory, uh, there's no doubt in my mind he has all the tools needed to do that. Let's go to Seren Petro. Go ahead, Seren. Uh, yeah, but kind of one for Brett and one for uh, Coach Reed. <clears throat> Brett, with the, you, you, the Mahomes contract came first and then Chris Jones' contract gets done. But were you kind of happen to – was there a little – I don't know, massaging of both of them where you needed one guy to do this to make the other guy fit? And were they kind of working in concert? Were the negotiations kind of going on in concert or did it go Pat and then Chris? Uh, and then for Coach Reed, uh, getting Chris Jones back, it's 20 of 22 starters uh, that you had in the Super Bowl and really 22 guys that started during the course of the year that you'll have back. Most teams have, you know, that have gone to back-to-back -back Super Bowls, six, seven, eight guys that turn over view worry that now having everybody back, maybe there's a sense of complacency that you don't have guys that have that hunger that are looking for that first ring. 
Well, going in uh, to the off season and knowing that our priorities were, were Pat Mahomes and Chris Jones, um, <clears throat> we got through the free agency process and we, we had a plan that we felt we could execute independently of each other. Uh, and we were ready to go. But the curveball was, Seren, as you mentioned, just the unknown. So, um, you know, to your question, going into this, um, we were able to come up with an independent plan for both and just be able to hopefully execute and not have to worry about one being done before the other. But <clears throat> this did take a curve uh, with the unknown cap for next year and just being able to allocate our funding um, in a proper manner that, that we can handle both both players. So to your to your question, you know, the honest answer is that it did take some massaging for both of these players. Um, and their cash flows early on to make sure that we could handle and be protected against, um, you know, the cap next year. And again, we still don't know where that's going to go. So uh, going into this, I, I think that we were all systems go. Um, but as this got closer to, to training camp, we really needed more time to, to work through the deals and, and kind of um, have one work with each other to get them done. Yeah, Saran, I'm not uh, as concerned about that um, having everybody back. I, I feel the energy that the guys have. I think now it's just important that we we bear down and, and go through the process of getting the work done. And from what I could tell to, uh, from talking to the guys, everybody's ready to do that. And, and uh, you know, and now we just have to do it. So we, we've got to take day by day and take it day by day and work, uh, work our tail off. So uh, we understand that, that that's going to take place. And listen, if we can be half as good as your beard's looking right now, dude, we'll be good. <laughs> All right, guys, we have time for a couple more for Coach and Brett before we let them go. Uh, let's go to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, guys, thanks for doing this. Uh, my question for Chris is, uh, Chris, just what does it mean to you that Patrick was willing to work out his deal with you in mind? Uh, in terms of your teammates and your guys' relationship. And then secondly, for Brett and Coach, what does it say about Patrick and then everybody understanding the team's goal in mind for this offseason? Um, for me, it was just about the understanding that they have uh, about treating uh, Dynasty and Kansas City. I mean, we both have initially the same goal, uh, create a Dynasty, build something special especially in Kansas City with Coach Reed and all the talent we have there. And uh, we all have the same mindset. We want to keep this team together. So whatever we have to do um, initially to make sure that we ensure that we stay together and we also can keep the guys around us together, that we can come together and do that. Yeah, was was I next on that, I guess? Um, so, I listen, I, I'm not – Again, I'm, I'm not worried about everything, uh, Nate, as far as uh, how things end up or whatever. I, I just want to make sure that we get down and we, we go through the process of getting ourselves ready to go. Um, I think it's important that you do that day by day and, um, you know, work hard. So, I mean, if, if we do that and we stay focused, we'll be uh, on – the challenges, there, there are ups and downs in every league and you got to prepare yourself uh, uh, to work through all that stuff. I think I answered your question. I'm not, I think that was what you had in mind. Let's go to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Thanks guys for doing this and congratulations to Chris. Um, first for Brett, um, you said, you, you know, this needed time to get done. Um, but would your preference have been for you to be able to get this done last season when, you know, Chris was holding out from the offseason workouts? And because, as you mentioned, you know, you don't like for things to get to the franchise tag. And for Coach, you've handled the personnel side in Philadelphia. Just curious, you know, what's your take on how Brett has handled this offseason and how difficult is it to just juggle the cap and do the things that he's done to keep this group together? Well, look, I mean, we would have uh... – we would love to get something done last season. I, I think that, you know, when you have a player as talented as Chris, I mean, you know, the sooner you can get something done, the better. Uh, what I do think, it, it's a great example of Chris's maturity um, as a person and as, as a pro. Um, as you mentioned, you know, Chris wants to get something done, 
Um, we weren't able to do that last year. And in addition to that, you know, we felt going into to last offseason, um, losing Justin Houston and D Ford, we had to add uh, another elite playmaker to go along with Chris. And, and we did that. So we, we trade a pick, we get Frank and, and we get Frank a contract. We want to do something with Chris. We can't get, uh, we can't get it done. Um, but there was always communication that, you know, we'll, we'll get something, just be patient. It would have been very easy for Chris, um, you know, to, to show up late or, you know, to, to complain. Um, but Chris was dedicated um, to this team. He wanted to win a Super Bowl. And the really cool thing, Coach and I talk about all the time, um, you know, how was Chris going to handle the first few weeks of, of practice with Frank and, and you know, being a little disappointed. Um, and within a few days, I remember being at training camp last year and seeing Frank and Chris just hit it off. And I, I said, this is going to be pretty cool because Frank Clark has a lot of respect for Chris Jones because he knows how good he is. And then Chris has a lot of respect for, Crank, for Frank. So now we're here a year later, both these guys – um, have been secured by the Chiefs. And um, again, it's just, it's a special relationship those two have. And now that we're able to both compensate them for their services on the field is is a cool deal for us. And, and now they can just go out there and do what they do. Yeah. So um, why don't you fit, go ahead and ask me that same question that you had there so everybody hears it one more time. Yeah, you've handled the personnel side before in Philadelphia. Yeah. Just how difficult is it to do what Brett did this offseason with juggling the salary cap and getting all of these guys back this year? Yeah, no, listen, I, I think uh, Brett's done a phenomenal job with it. And uh, I think you guys have got to know him now. And, and that relentless personality, nothing's impossible. It's positive. Let's see. Let's explore. Let's not be afraid to go there. Let's not say that it can't be done. Let's find a way that it can be done. All of those things are how he operates. And that's, that again, ends up being something that is contagious with people that are around him. So everybody feeds off of that, that energy. And, and uh, that's what's made this whole thing really possible. I mean, I think if you, you looked around the league, people were going to say, how, how in the world did they get this done? Well, relationships, relentless work, planning, planning in advance, not waiting to the moment to do it. But I mean, he's been on top of this uh, for, for a while. And just, and then he got thrown this curveball with the pandemic, which it, it, it's not a right now thing. It is right now, but it's also something that affects the future. So he's been relentless on finding a way to get it done where it's not gonna kill you down the road um with deals and so um there's been just there have been a lot of man hours that he's put into this so my my hat goes off to him I, i've seen how these things work and and uh i was around two of the best in the business um in philadelphia with, with the that worked with the cap and and uh, so was brett i mean he he was around those guys too and and uh um so but just the job that he's done here has just been uh tremendous along with his guys, but but he's the leader of that. All right, guys, we've got Dave Scrutter to close us out, and then we're going to let Coach and Brett uh, <laughs> jump off the call here. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Brett. Um, first for you, uh, we've seen some some monster contracts for defensive tackles here in the last couple of years with Aaron Donald, obviously, Fletcher Cox. Um, is that a sign of just maybe the scarcity of, like, really elite interior pass rushers? Um, and then for Coach Reed, after that, if you could just maybe touch on uh, kind of what your plan for the week is with uh, rookies able to finally report today. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It, I think it is um, uh, a result of the scarcity of the position. Uh, there's very few uh, all-around defense alignment that come out every year, um, you know, and, and everyone obviously puts a premium on, on pass rusher. So uh, it's, it's a little bit easier to find some, some pluggers in the middle, um, some big body guys, but, you know, to find a guy like Chris Jones, it's, it's very hard to do. And, you know, when we were going through this exercise over the last few years and, and, and once we really, you know, we're dialing it down this, this off season, um, if you are lucky enough, 
to find someone that has the ability of Chris Jones, uh, you're going to be picking in the top five or top ten because these guys, you know, just just don't fall and and um, very rare, I should say, um, that these guys fall. They're just hard to find. There's not a lot of them, and the ones that do get get picked up rather quickly. So uh, we knew the talent we had in Chris, and, and we knew how important he was for our our success. So. Um, Again, there was really no doubt in our mind that we were going to make um, make this work with him and his agents. I cut out for a minute there. Who who asked the question? Dave Scretta. Dave. Yep. Okay. Um, so I, I think I heard the question. So what what's going on uh, now is was a question with the rookies. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The plan for this week. Yeah. Guys reporting. Yeah. So Dave, I, Rick Burkholder and, and and Mitch Reynolds have done a phenomenal job of setting everything up. Uh, for um, to try to be COVID safe and the best we possibly can. So that's where we start. We're starting with a couple of days of testing uh, for the players. They do back-to-back -back tests and then uh, they'll actually uh, from there uh, work their physical, get their equipment and then head with Ted to do whatever media obligations they potentially have. And there are a couple of days for that. That, that. that takes you into four days here and then um, and then there's a point where we're going to be able to have the guys lift and and meet with them and 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 do a potential walkthrough with them. So um, that, that's kind of how that that sets up, and that goes for an extended period of time. Now, they're the league and and uh, the union are still working through a few things, but we're uh, Bill O'Brien with the Texans and and uh, the Chiefs were were starting it off and kind of working through it and and uh, working through the formats that have been given to us. But I, listen, I, I just, uh, the setup, when you guys see the setup, um, if you have an opportunity to do that, I mean, it's phenomenal. We're going to do everything out of the stadium, the, the way they've set it up. I mean, we, we could have a ton of people social distance more than we have with our football team. Um, and they, they've done that. They've got it all set up with monitors and everything else. And they've got uh, each meeting room is set up. They've split the, uh, Arrowhead Stadium in half, so one half the defense is on one side, the offense is on the other side. And it, I mean, it's 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 really it was something. I mean, it was really something to to watch uh, form there. So, and then the testing, um, the guys, uh, they're going to be tested often, so it's uh, it, it'll be good that way. And then it's just listen, there's a responsibility for coaches and players to make sure we handle ourselves right when we're away from it, and. And, uh, you know, we're still going to keep social, as much social distancing when we can. Um, and that's uh, obviously it's a contact sport. So but we're going to keep it when we're not in contact. We're going we're to keep our social distance when we're not playing. And, and we're going to and we have all that set up and we're going to have our masks uh, set up and and do all the things that, and wash our hands, do all those, those fundamental things. We're going to stay on top of that. Andy, just as a quick follow-up, uh, Andy, when would you when do you expect if all goes well, you can be on the field for something resembling a practice for the first time? Yeah, we'll see on that, Adam. They're 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 working through that right now. So normally, what um, what they're what they're thinking right now is, and they're, again, they're working through this. But it'll be it'll be about eight days, which ends up being about ten with days off, um, where they're lifting and and. Uh, uh, you know, once we get to that point, once we get through the first four here uh, with the physicals and the, this COVID testing. So we get through that and then there'll be about eight days, which equals 10 with the days off of lifting and meetings and, and uh, potential walkthroughs. So, and then we'll just take it from there. They're, they'll have another part of a ramp up that'll last a little bit over a week, I think, uh, where you might be able to put um, pat these padded shirts they have now that's part of the new CBA you kind of get into the new CBA rules except it be extended a little bit so that's what we know at this point it, it seems like a pretty solid plan to allow the guys to ramp up and and uh, and get themselves where they need need to be I think these guys have been working out and working change of direction and, and restriction with the bands that they have and um, the, the giant rubber bands that they use uh, to, to work some restriction and tugs and pulls and all that. So they, they won't, they'll, they'll keep themselves, you know, as much injury free as they can coming into camp. But again, we'll give them a good ramp up too. 
Coach and Brett, we appreciate your time. Uh, Chris, do you want to hang on the line with us? We're going to have a few more here. Thanks, guys. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Thanks Coach. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go to BJ Kissel. BJ, go ahead. Thanks, Brad. Hey, and Chris, congratulations again, man. I know that uh, it's been a long time coming and a lot of work that you would put in to, to get that financial security, man. So congratulations. Um, the question I have is besides locking in that financial security for yourself, you've spoken a lot about dynasty and your teammates have used that word, even going down to Miami after the game. How do you feel like you getting this deal done and all the other moves this offseason have put you guys in a prime position to make that, you know, a reality and something within your grasp? Uh, BJ, uh, appreciate it. Uh, I think there's something that's a culture that you have to build, and you got to have everyone around you and everybody within the organization committed to building that. And I think that's what we're doing right now. You know, starting from the owner, from the president, and we go down to the GM and the head coach, and relaying that message throughout the building. Not only relaying the message, but instilling the message in everyone that's in the building that is creating something special and once it starts to trickle down people start to believe in and then we can put it into fruition of making it happen and I think that's what we're doing now slowly but surely we're getting all the right pieces back and we got 20 or 22 starters coming back to the youth I think everybody still had the same hunger mindset that you know we didn't taste it success and I feel like we want to taste it again because one is good but two is better and I think everyone is headed on the right track with the right mindset uh, going to uh, run in the back. Let's go to Darren Smith. Go ahead, Darren. Uh, thank you, Chris. And uh, first of all, congratulations on your contract extension. Uh, I think next time you can treat for lunch at, at uh, Gates or something. But I wanted to talk to you, one to ask you about your emotional roller coaster since last season. Obviously, you wanted a contract extension at that time. They brought in Frank, they brought in Tyron, and, you know, you, we could tell by the look on your face when camp started that you wasn't, you know, you wasn't emotionally there. What advice would you give your teammates uh, in the near future when taking Brett at his word? If, you know, if you're looking to get a deal done that he's going to get a deal done. And, and also, do you believe that players should take team friendly deals to, you know, to help the, the, the cap and to stay with the team? Or do you believe it's the team's responsibility to figure the, to uh, figure out the uh, cap space? Well, I appreciate it. Um, Whenever you're in town, you can go to Joe's or Gates or Q39 and it's on me. Uh, and, uh, and another thing I like is just this emotionally face. No, listen, just because I have a crazy emotional face on my uh, facial expression, is that I'm always out there anytime I step on the field. So once I appeared in camp, there was no, I told, told my agents and beaches, no contract talks, let's just focus on football and finish up for this year. And my thing with that is about being patient, you know. I knew going into this year, you know, next year we could talk about contracts. And um, this phase was COVID came about and getting cat deals done. Um, cat deal was important. You you know, the patience with that. And kind of understanding that uh, whatever happens, happens. You know, I know uh, I'm big into my faith and I'm making sure that, you know, whatever happens, God got me covered. And uh, for me, you know, um, I always wanted to stay with the cat to the chief. So, uh, it's not about being the highest paid player. It's not about being, uh, you know, it's about um, getting what you deserve and what you think um, can fit you. And uh, I think me and the Chiefs came to, uh, to agreement for a certain number and uh, that we both could agree to, and, uh, and we made it happen. But most importantly, being patient with the organization and understanding that no matter what, you determine your own destiny. Let's go to Len Jennings. Go ahead, Len. Hey, Chris. Uh, uh, congratulations um, uh, on, on the new deal. Uh, there are a series of like kind of like cryptic tweets that you kind of were putting out on social media, keeping a lot of fans guessing if you were going to come back or not come back. Um, did you feel like you were part of the process in, in, uh, in this whole deal? And that I mean, did you feel like you were getting the information that you needed? And I know you were talking about getting Pat's deal done. But how close to the process for you, especially in the relationship you have with the Chiefs? Um, a lot of a lot of stuff I tweet um, and a lot of stuff I post. You can't look at it too much because sometimes there are mixed signals. When I actually go back and look at my tips and uh, my tweets, I can kind of see how people get mixed signals. 
but if I read something and I feel like I like it, I, I like to broadcast it. I'm one of those people that I like to see. Um, I like to let people see how I think and uh, what I read, and uh, and I do it through posting on my social media aspect. And I feel like you know people kind of begin to take social media too serious sometimes. Let's go to Steve Walls. Go ahead, Steve. Steve, you got us? Can you hear there me? You yep, Can we you? got you. Hey, Chris, uh, congratulations again, man. Uh, you've won the Super Bowl and now ink this new deal. Uh, other guys in the past have tasted similar success and then have become sort of complacent, so to, so to speak. Uh, over the, the next few four years, how do you make sure that you keep that hunger and that dog mentality that you brought uh, uh, since you've entered the league? Listen, man, for me, it's nothing changed. It's still all about uh, being the best. I can do. It's still about being a sack leader, winning defensive player of the year. You know, I'm always pushing myself to new heights, man. This, this is just one of the check marks on my on my journey. You know, this is not the end of my journey. This is just the beginning. You know, thankfully, I'm able to spin over the streets and build a dynasty and create something special. But for me, it's all it's about having a Hall of Fame career, uh, getting a gold jacket. You know. If somebody told me, honestly, if somebody told me you can choose 20 million, 20 sacks this year, I'll choose the sacks every day. You know, that's just where my mind and where my heart is at. It's getting sacks, winning championship rings, man, and having fun, man, enjoying the process. Man. And that's where I'm at right now, you know. Um, the money is, is good to be financially stable to where I can give my kids and my family things that I wasn't fortunate enough to have when I was coming up. But uh, for me, the game is bigger than just money. It's, a, it's my passion. It's what I love to do. And uh, yeah, I want to get the gold jacket, man. All right, guys, we've probably got time for a couple more here. We're going to go Harold Kuntz and then Pete Sweeney to close us out. Go ahead, Harold. Hey, Chris, congratulations, man. I know that's a top honor for you with all you've been through. Uh, my question to you, you always mentioned uh, Sack Nation, and you're going to write a movie about it. In this movie, what do you think the final script ends up being with you and uh, Frank Clark together now and a couple other guys in defensive line for the foreseeable future? Thanks, Harold. Uh, most importantly, man, uh, uh, what's crazy is the last game, uh, the Super Bowl, I was actually whispering to Frank that they, they had an audio clip that just might be our last game together. You know, you got to cherish those type of moments, man. And thankfully, I'm able to spend uh, four more years with my brother. Uh, it's going to be stuff. It's going to be special. When um, when we, we finally retire, they're going to ask me to make a movie about how successful and how we was able to bend and uh, keep this team together and how Coach Reed came to an organization who hasn't won a championship in 50 years and finally brought them their first championship. The, the, um, the general manager, how he was able to make sure that everything stayed intact. And Brent Tillis, who um, – who was able to, to finesse these contracts and, and, and to fit under the cap issue. And um, the head scout, Ryan Nutt, Mark Donovan, the Hunt family, you know, the list will go on, but they're definitely going to make a, a – it'll be it'll be like a Michael Jordan last dance, but um, it'll be a beautiful – it'll be a beautiful movie, man. Uh, but they're definitely going to make a movie about this, and uh, hopefully it'll be by a stagnation production. Let's go to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Chris, congratulations. Uh, Well-deserved. I, I think leading up to uh, a contract, your first contract in the NFL, your position, a lot of the emphasis is on sacks. I was just was wondering, how much pressure did you feel that you, before you needed to sign this deal, you needed to get sacks? And now that you have it, do you feel like this will make you a better player because maybe you don't need to focus even on that as much anymore? Uh, thanks, Pete. But no, no, listen, man, I always – put pressure on myself to be the, the best player I can be, man. It's not about the money. It's not about, listen, I love sex with a passion. I love pass <laughs> yeah. so like I can wake up every day, and, you know, I can pass rush every day. It's my passion. It's my dream. It's my goal. It's like, it's the love of my life. Pass rush, man. And, um, you know, I always put pressure on myself, whether it's, you know, whether it's this or not, whether I got a contract or not, I still have pressure on myself to be the best I can be. And that goal is to win the MVP, you know, win the best defensive player of the year, I mean, of the league. And I put that pressure on myself every year so I can challenge myself, set challenges for myself to 
to, to compete at the highest level. And that's where my head is, uh, whether I got a contract or not, that doesn't change my position or where I stand with my goals and ambitions in this game. You know, my goal is still to wear a gold jacket when I'm finished with this game. And uh, this just where I'm headed, man. I don't care about the money. Thank God for the money. It's a blessing, man. It's a blessing to get this contract. It's a blessing that I'm with the Chiefs. But my ultimate goal is still to be a Hall of Famer. And uh, that doesn't change anything. Chris, before we let you go, Mitch Holtis is texting me like crazy. He wants to get one last one in. Go ahead, Mitch. First of all, when do they get palm trees in Stark Vegas? Um, <laughs> hey, <clears throat> as you go to this next part of your career, one thing's really apparent with Spags, and that he asked guys to do a lot of things. As you move out into this next part, ask to play both inside and outside. What about you working on playing outside, even if you're asked to play outside the tackle shoulder? How much of that goes into your preparation for these next several years of your career? That'll be amazing. Listen, um, me and Spags have a great relationship, man. And uh, I tell Spags all the time, listen, at heart, I'm a TBN. But I'm fortunate enough where you guys can use me at Cowboy. Anytime Spags need me to move around, play linebacker, outside linebacker, listen, I'm here for it. But I don't want to, listen, I hope Spags look at this and see that I don't want him to feel like I'm restrained or he's restrained in any type of way. Use me as this, you know. Put me anywhere on the field. I'm still going to get sacked, baby. We're going to, we're going to, I'm a chasing quarterback. I'm going to make sure you feel me. So, uh, and, you know, anyone, any where on stats like to use me, I'm always open for it, you know. I actually love moving around. That's when the defense, I mean, that's when I kind of get an offensive problem, you know, moving around inside, outside. You know, I can stand up if Spags would like it, you know. I can stand up, play middle linebacker, you know, whatever he likes. 